In this video, I'm going over a microeconomic model of voting. And this is something that students occasionally try to model, and they run into some interesting problems along the way. In particular, they find out firsthand how the drop in the bucket problem works and how it looks in terms of elasticities. And this problem also helps us think about how do we oftentimes solve these drop in the bucket problems through social incentives. So, um, this is the basic model of voting, and um, I like my students to use uh, continuous choice variables, so it's not vote or don't vote, that would be binary, and of course you can uh, draw up a binary choice variable model, but in which case it's simpler to just have an inequality instead of a maximization problem. But I actually think a more interesting way of modeling this is to use effort costs in terms of voting, and to have uh, your choice variable be what is the effort you're willing to put into voting? So if it's snowy and you have to put on your boots and truck through the snow, will you vote? Um, if it's really easy and you can vote in the mail, will you vote? So what are the effort hurdles um, above which you are not willing to vote and below which you are willing to vote? So this is essentially a cutoff point. But cutoff points can sometimes make really good choice variables, so that's what I'm doing here. So it's the effort that this particular voter is willing to put into voting, and of course their benefit from voting is the probability that their candidate wins, which depends on um, the effort they're willing to put into vote and um, the required effort to vote that, that particular election. So how many hurdles are there to voting? Do you have to wait in a two hour line? Is it a 15 minute line? Um, do you have to provide five types of ID, etc., etc.? And just to simplify, we're letting that, that all be clumped into one variable. This is an exogenous variable, which is just the effort required in this particular election. And minus effort, to keep things simple, your cost is just your effort. Now, when you look at this model um, carefully enough, the first thing that people tend, oftentimes realize is the fact that actually the relationship between your personal effort to vote or even your personal vote and the probability that your candidate wins, that elasticity is basically zero. As long as it's a big enough election, your one vote doesn't really matter. So first of all, let me write that out in calculus language. So the elasticity of the probability that you're gonna win, that your candidate wins, with respect to your effort that you put into your vote, is basically zero. And in which case, um, it's really hard to get a situation where the person actually votes if this is their objective function. But we know that people do vote, so what is going on? Given that your one vote is unlikely to count, but people actually go in to vote, how do we even explain that behavior? What, what do we need to add to this objective function to make it match people's real world uh, voting motivations? And the way I like to think of this is it's really about being part of something that's bigger than you. It's about being able to say I voted, being able to wear the sticker when you go into work that day. It's about sort of being part of the conversation in a legitimate way that you spend months leading up to the election talking about who you're going to vote for and that's some sort of status symbol in your social group and basically it's the social utility you get from participating in this that's actually the real, um, the real benefit rather than the actual effect on the probability that your candidate will win. So let's add that into this objective function. All right, and we can make this a lot more specific than this. I made it pretty general. It's just the social utility you get based on the effort you're willing to put in to vote. And that social utility, of course, is going to depend on advertising in your region, it's going to depend on your social group, it's going to depend on the social pressures, whether or not I voted goes on your social media account, um, how many people notice when someone has a voting sticker on voting day, all kinds of things can increase the social utility from voting, and essentially this is what most campaigns are all about. It's about increasing the social utility you get from um, participating in voting rather than trying to convince people that their vote actually matters. Um, because most people kind of intuitively know that this elasticity is zero, whereas this elasticity is not zero. This elasticity can be pretty big. 
So this is actually pretty common with public goods problems or problems where you have this drop in the bucket problem. And of course the drop in the bucket portion is always going to be associated with something that has a near zero elasticity involved. Um, and oftentimes the social solution to these public goods problems has to do with increasing the social utility people get from doing something that's essentially a drop in the bucket.